Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and Ferrari and I are here today to give you my uh, standard review of the new Irix 45mm F1.4, and this is in their Dragonfly finish, which is somewhat of a hybrid of their original um, Blackstone and Firefly finishes in that it has some of the touches of the Blackstone, which include coming with this case, uh, having more advanced weather sealing, few other details, some metals in the construction, but it also has a little bit of the uh, Firefly construction in that it has a rubberized focus ring rather than metal and it's not all metals. But what you've got here is an exquisitely made lens. Now, Irix is a Swiss slash Korean company where they do a lot of their design work um, in Switzerland and then they produce lenses in Korea, uh, South Korea. And over the last five years, they have been producing lenses. They don't pop them out all that often. This is only their fourth lens release in five years. But whenever they do, I like what they produce. They really have some unique innovations here, extremely nice build quality. And while these are manual focus only lenses, they produce both very nice images and there's a lot of positive things about them. One curious thing though is that they persist in developing to this point, this being a new lens release, in mounts like the Canon EF, which I'm reviewing here, Nikon F, uh, then there's Pentax, uh, I believe K mount, and then there is a version of this lens that is coming for Fujifilm's medium format GFX mount, actually, which is a little bit surprising. But outside of the GFX mount, all of these are traditional um, DSLR mounts. And with manual focus lenses, manual focus lenses work so much better on mirrorless bodies. And in fact, the first thing that I did was throw this lens on an adapter onto my Canon EOS R5 or one of my Sony bodies. And that's where I'll use it exclusively because frankly, I don't particularly enjoy manual focusing on DSLRs. So I will say to Irix, I think that there's lots of room for development on you know Canon's RF mount or Nikon's Z mount or Sony FE to where your lenses can really have an opportunity to shine because really manual focus on mirrorless bodies is, you know, while not as effortless as autofocus, obviously, in many ways, it really is a joy. And of course, there is that added benefit of being able to really control focus pulls for video and so that you can get really smooth uh, focus pulls that you have absolute control over. And so, you know, a great venue there. Now, today I'm doing the standard review, and if you want even more detail, because I'm just hitting the highlights, you can check out my definitive review in detail, which really breaks down a whole lot of the image quality um, and much deeper than what we're going to do here today. Today's episode is brought to you by Phantom Wallet, the minimalist modern wallet that sets you free from the bulky traditional wallet while also making it easy to access your cards and money when you need them, thanks to their unique fanning mechanism. Visit phantomwallet.com to check out their unique sizes, styles, and finishes that span from aluminum to wood to carbon fiber. You can even customize your wallet with new accessories like a money clip, cash holder, ID display, and even the Chipolo tracking integration if you're the kind of person who loses their wallet. Use code DUSTIN15 for 15% off when you're ready to check out. I do want to thank our, the sponsor of today's episode, which is Phantom Wallet. They've been a great company to deal with and they make a great product. So let's start by taking a close up look here at the build and the handling of this lens and give you a close look at it. So let's take a closer look at the Irix 45 millimeter F1.4. And the first thing that stands out to me is that, as always with Irix lenses, it comes with a really nice molded case that offers both high protection value, but also is because it's so tightly molded, it doesn't take up a lot of additional room, making it very useful. Now, the 45 millimeter comes with a lens hood. It's just plastic, kind of a matte finish inside, not anything particularly special. And as you can see, it is fairly long and deep to provide some protection value from stray light. Now, this lens has their dragonfly finish. And essentially what they've done is they've merged a few of the elements from the original kind of bifurcated blackstone and dragonfly finish to where it has some components of both, including that molded case. But we have a mixture of metals and uh, then, you know, various composites. We do have weather sealing inside, including a gasket and then I believe four other seal points, 77 millimeter filter thread up front. 
Then we also have uh, both their kind of unique lock and then unlock kind of tension mechanism for the focus ring, which is kind of a uniquely uh, IRIX thing in a lens like this. You can see that all of the various um, engravings there, they have a luminescent paint, and that it also has this really unique ridge and marker, which I find useful for focus pulls uh, for video, so you kind of know where you're going to end up. There's a unique rubberized texture to the focus ring, and about 175 degrees of focus throw. Um, overall, the build of it is nice. It's not a lightweight lens. It weighs in at 925 grams, and it is 105 millimeters in length, 87 millimeters in diameter. You have nine rounded aperture blades inside, and you have a beautiful focus throw that makes this lens uh, really quite a joy to use out in the field if you don't mind manual focus. There's an electromagnetic aperture iris, and so that's all controlled from within the camera. So as you can see, a lot of nice things as a part of the construction, and I can verify that using the lens in the field has been great. Uh, in a portrait session, for example, I found that I had little issue in nailing focus and getting focus where I wanted, and there's just the right amount of weight there for fine-tuning focus and just nailing it. And because I was using it uh, for the session on the Canon EOS R5, it's wonderful focus guide. Really makes manual focus kind of fun, and, and so I enjoy using that for the process. So overall, nice build, nice handling, a lot of good stuff there, particularly if you're using it on a mirrorless body. So how about the image quality? With an f1.4 lens, a large maximum aperture lens like this, my experience is, is that lens makers go in one of two different directions. For example, right now, I'm filming on the uh, Sony 135mm uh, f1.8 G Master lens. It is an incredibly sharp, incredibly well-corrected lens, and I really, really love it. I think it's an amazing lens. And if there is any criticism of it, it is of, people will criticize the fact that its bokeh is maybe not as magical as what the bokeh from some less sharp lenses are able to produce. And that right there is basically the tension that every lens designer has to deal with. You can either work to correct all the aberrations, and in the byproduct you're going to get you know, very crisp results, very high contrast, you know, even at very large aperture values. But the trade-off is, is that often the bokeh isn't quite as soft and maybe the rendering not quite as magical as a lens that is less well corrected. Irix has chosen to go with a more classical design here to where um, while I, I chromatic aberrations are actually fairly well corrected. There's very little longitudinal and basically no lateral chromatic aberration that I saw, but there is some spherical aberration that is left. That, you know, while there's lots of resolution there, it feels like there is just a little bit of maybe Vaseline smeared over the top to where it's just not quite precise. The contrast, micro contrast, is not super high. Now, if you zoom out and you look at lenses or images on a global level, they look fantastic. But if you zoom into a pixel level, you can see that the resolution and particularly the contrast doesn't really just jump off the page. Now the lens sharpens down a lot, particularly at f2.8. It makes a big jump ahead. And by the time you're shooting at landscape apertures, you've got all the sharpness and contrast you could ever want. It is fantastically good across the frame. But at f1.4, some people may find themselves a little bit disappointed in the overall sharpness and contrast at a pixel level. What I found with myself is that I, I basically had a two kind of responses to the lens. If I looked at, at, at images globally, I thought they looked really fantastic. The, the trade-off of not correcting all of those aberrations, that spherical aberration, is that the bokeh quality is amazingly soft and smooth and creamy. And the byproduct is that it produces uh, images that are just really pleasing visually. And when you consider that most of our images are shared at a global level, not at a pixel level, I think that that is a worthy consideration. Do you love the look of images when they're viewed as a whole, as opposed to just kind of isolating one portion of the frame? And so I love the look of the images globally. If I zoom into a pixel level, which of course I do, I'm a gear reviewer, and so I spend a good chunk of my life, you know, looking critically at image quality. And if I do that, I'm less impressed overall at wide apertures. And of course, you know, by the time you've, you've stopped down, you're getting that amazing contrast. However, it's, it's different kinds of images at that point with a lot of things in focus rather than a very small depth of field. 
And so I, I, I want to try to detail that to maybe give you a sense of the overall image quality so you can make a decision for yourself as to whether or not you are a pixel peeper you're someone that wants just, you know, kind of like the Sigma art approach to where everything is very corrected, very high detail at wide apertures, but maybe at the cost of being a little bit, you know, more clinical, a little less artful in the overall rendering. Or if you're a person that prefers the feel of images more than the, you know, the technical detail or excellence of them. And, and I think that this lens falls towards, towards the latter, where it, the feel of the images are fantastic, even if the overall you know, detail is not off the charts incredible at a pixel level. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you look in the description down below, you can find linkage to my full text review. There's also linkage there to an image gallery. You can check out photos from the lens, maybe get a little more of a sense for yourself. There are some buying links there if you'd like to purchase one for yourself. The lens retails for right under 700 US dollars, so it's not inexpensive, but of course, this is a very you know, this is a premium lens, it has a premium build, and it has a very nice performance overall. And so, you know, you'll have to make a decision whether or not a manual focus lens at 45 millimeters suits your purposes for that. But there are buying links there. There's also linkage to um, purchase some of my merchandise from my channel. We've got a lot of great options there, so check that out. Uh, to follow me on social media, to become one of my patrons, to sign up for my newsletter that comes out every Thursday. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. And be sure to click that, ring that bell, and so you get notifications when new content drops. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and let the light in.